Bill Plaschke, Tim Kalashaw, Bomani Jones, Mr. Bob Ryan. Today, drop. Drop. <laughs> the scores that down. Drop. <laughs> and if there's any time after that, maybe Bill and Bob could explain what's happening here. Mm -hmm. I've never Jokes seen you aside, this is when Bob won the Red Smith Award for the A3 Sports Riders. Huzzah! And with that comes a 50 point bonus. Let's go around the horn. Right. Tell me that. Fitty. Wow. Welcome to Around the Horn, presented by Smirnoff, part of Happy Hour. Wait and see approach. Wait and see if the waiter brings those drinks with the little umbrellas in them. That's LeBron and Love poolside while everybody does the math of how much more both stand to make by opting out. We know what it is from LeBron's perspective. It could be 40 mil per year in two years because of the whole new salary cap. But how should the Cavs, how should the city of Cleveland feel about LeBron opting out, Plaschke? I know it seems obvious he's coming back. He said he's coming back, all that. They should still be just a little bit on edge because it's obvious he's doing this for more than just the money. He's doing this to make sure the Cavs take care of their business and re-sign you know, re Tristan Thompson, maybe okay. bring back and and is that still wrong? Kevin Love, maybe bring back Iman Shumpert. He's waiting to see what the team's going to look like, and I'm sure the Cavs will take care of it. But you know what? There's one little, maybe just a 1% chance if something goes wrong, this guy's a free agent. So Tim Cleveland better take care of his business. I think Plasky's just trying to scare folks. I don't. I think the most paranoid no. <laughs> sky is falling. Cleveland fan doesn't need to worry on this front. LeBron knows it's all about money. You said it. In two years, in 2017, he can make he can sign a five-year, 203 million dollar yeah. deal yeah. in Cleveland, and there's no reason to worry about putting the team together. Look at the team they had together in the finals. The team's not going to look worse than that, and he got to Game Six with that. So nothing they can do this offseason Jones. can send him running the other way. Yeah, it's all fun and games until he actually meets with somebody. However, my nickname is Bomani. He ain't leaving Miami Jones. So I can't say that I know what LeBron will or <laughs> will not do. I can't speak Bomani. in absolute terms. Hey, that seems unfair. I'm just trying to be honest with you. But look, I don't think he goes anywhere. There's no threat until there's somewhere for him to go. And some team would have to be prepared with the cap space and ready to take LeBron's call and shuffle everything around in order to get him there. So I don't think that there's a real hammer to him opting out. However, if you're Dan Gilbert, I don't think it's the best idea for you to act like there's no real hammer there. You need to pretend to keep this dude happy. Did you say, though, it would take some team willing to take LeBron's call? You think you think their team just hanging so, out? Like, nah, no, that's LeBron I mean, some, line I mean, one. Somebody, Forget it. Forget about you it. You gotta be ready. You gotta have the space, and you gotta be ready to do the things I necessary think. to get him in like that. If you don't have the space, you make the space. Bob Wright, how about you? This has been part of the plan from the beginning. They know that. Everyone knows that, that he will opt out because the eye is on that big money down the road. I will add this, however. I don't think he's going to go anywhere ever simply because he has now repositioned himself from being the villain of the decision and the post-press conference and the abandonment into the white knight, the savior. Even losing this year was so noble as he got so much attention for being so good in defeat. He's not going to abandon Cleveland, I don't think. He's worried his long-term -term image is at stake as well. He's going to get paid, but he doesn't want to okay. have his Bill image Bill Plasky, you, you, back in, the you made that line, face. You the, said, mm. the bottom line is still He's a free agent. That's all I'm going to say. And maybe there's a minuscule chance, but he's still a free agent. So I don't know how much we can predict the future, how much we can count on anything. Bomani Jones. He can't leave Cleveland until he's ready to sell that house because he'd never be able to go back. He'd be like Art Modell. The owner's box would be empty when he came to play those games in Cleveland if he tried to leave this time. He can't ever come back. <laughs> that may be true. You know, did you see the photo, though, of this, this summit by the pool, LeBron and Love, and Love had to bring a chair over Didn't himself just to carry the chair over himself? Uh, there was not Terrible enough space optics. in that one. That's where they were lacking space, Bomani Jones. We'll move on to something more important. The Okafor jersey. The headlines of him looking unhappy and slamming it down onto the ground. Well, also possible that there's a table there, so maybe not so slammy. Kalisha. Was it fair for people of your ilk to question how Okafor put his jersey back on the table at an intro press conference? No, he did nothing wrong there, although I will say he did it. What he did do, he did it very quickly, and he wanted to, keep, to move on. The second-round picks were happy to stay and hold up their jerseys for a little while. But I don't blame him. I don't blame Okafor. I don't blame anybody who's on that team for wondering when exactly 
are we going to start trying to win games? He just joined a team. The two best players or the two prime picks they have on the team are basically centers. Now they've got three. They can move them around a little. But if once Joel Embiid ever gets healthy, what in the world are they going to do with him and Nerlens Noel and Jaleel Okafor? Uh, this team has Okay, been so you do concede that those questions are in Okafor's mind as well as he's at his intro press conference. Got to have some questions about what did okay. I just get into? I left Duke for this. Bomani, how about you? All right, it might not be fair to question him for the way that he dropped his jersey, but it is, in fact, funny, so we're going to do it. The fact that there was a table there <laughs> doesn't change the fact that he looked like he couldn't wait to get that jersey out of his head and get out of there. And look, he wound up on the team that nobody would want to play for. Okafor probably thought he was going to play for the Lakers. His daddy probably thought he was going to play for the Lakers. They were probably all excited. You're now going to play for the Sixers, and the Lakers, I feel like they're going to get better because they're the Lakers. The Sixers, I have no reason to be so enthusiastic, and who would be excited about walking in to losing 60 games and living in Philadelphia. Losing 60 games in sunshine, eh, you make it work. 60 games with that squad they're going to put together in Philadelphia, I wouldn't want to play for them. Bob, uh, Brian, what did you see here in this video? Now, as somebody who grew up 35 miles from William Penn statue, I do resent that remark about Philadelphia. <laughs> but we will move on. The Brenton. basketball team is a mess. I don't think we needed to see him drop the jersey with, shall we say, less than a loving care to know he wasn't happy from the moment he heard that, that, that he heard D'Angelo Russell's name called before his. And he yeah. knew, uh-oh, oh, my God. But he was praying, I'm sure, that then he would go to New York at that point. Well, he's not. And he's not happy. There wasn't any doubt about that. So I don't even think the jersey uh, is, is validation that we needed. We didn't need any validation, okay? He's not happy, clearly, about this. All right? What can I say? Bill Plaschke, what can you say? Well, I think if taken in a vacuum, you can say, well, maybe he just dropped the jersey. You know, it is almost, almost accidentally. But then you go back to draft night when he was actually drafted by the 76ers, clearly unhappy he wasn't with the Lakers, barely put the cap on, gave kind of a mumbling interview afterward. This is two weeks earlier. I talked to him in L.A., and he was so excited, so vociferous. Suddenly, you could be, almost barely hear him on TV. So from the moment he was drafted, he clearly didn't want to be a 76er. And then now you add this, and he clearly really was kind of, okay, I'm done with this. I think, I think he's not happy, and I don't blame him. I don't blame him. Body language experts, all of you. We'll move on. Let's talk some baseball. Meet the Mats. Meet him on the oh, mat. I knew you'd say that. Meet I him at the plate. Meet his family. Look at Grandpa there. Oh! How great is that? Grandpa! Kind of got an Ace of Gold thing going on, but we like that. That's a good thing. Seven plus three hits four RBIs for Mats. What did you think of the debut? How much hope for the Mets, Bo? Yeah, we love the able go to thing because it means you're going to live forever. I mean, I think for the Mets, of <laughs> course, you're happy. You've had a rookie with a great debut. That's fantastic. But there are two things the Mets don't need too much more of, which are pitching and wins at home. They are awful on the road, 11 to 27, and no team that's 500 has as few runs scored as the Mets have. So, of course, you take this as optimism. They're only two and a half games out, but their run differential is so much worse than the Nationals are. You expect the Nationals to run away with the division, and the Mets got more of what they already have. Unless he's Babe Ruth and he can play right field, I don't think that this is the Bob answer. Ryan. No matter what else happens in his career, he'll always have mm -hmm. his opening day to remember and cherish. That's the very least we can say. Just like Daniel Nava, the Red Sox, you get one shot at the have swing at a first pitch with the bases loaded in your first at bat, you get a grand slam. One shot, he did it. Matt's had one day to be the first, and he did what he did. Fine. Now, down the road, they could have a pitching staff that includes Wheeler when he comes back, and Harvey, and Syndergaard, and him, and DeGrom. That could be a lights out pitching staff in the year 20, what, 17 or 18. But right now, I, right, everything that Bomani said about the Mets is true. It was, it was so cool to see his family there, you know, from Long Island. Local kid makes good. Great story. However, on the same day in the first game of the doubleheader, the Mets won the game, by, even though they went 0 for 15 with runners in scoring position. <laughs> this is the Mets yeah. offense that ranks 14th out of 15 National League teams in virtually every hitting category. This is an offense that is not a playoff offense. They need to get some bats. So you got to wonder, all these great young arms, they may have to trade one or two of them to get somebody that can hit the ball. So you would move, you of course move a, a, a young arm here to get some offense in this season. Uh, well, it depends on how close they think they are. To make a we'll, run? we'll see in a, in, a, in a month from now how close they think they are. If they're close, they may have to do it. Yeah. Kalisha, how about you? There's a lot of raining on the Mets parade here, and I'm not going to do that. First of all, no. I applaud the young man who goes to the plate, and and not only does he deliver. He does it without batting gloves. How many pitchers in the majors <laughs> don't wear batting gloves? Who did he grow up watching? Vladimir Guerrero? I mean, Guerrero, that was yeah. great. The shots, the, the, fans, <laughs> the shots of the fans, the uh, shots of the fans, his family were terrific. He, he gave up two home runs, but he pitched well, well enough. And they do have good young pitching. I wouldn't even think about moving any part of it. They can stay in the wild card chase with what they've got.
Bomani 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 We've been on. We're Sounds taking a break. Me. Coming up, a college show. Ask me what I like about the new home run derby format. What do you like about the new home run derby format? Uh, actually, Around the Horn is presented by Smirno. Please drink responsibly. Part of happy hour. And in part by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Or sell. Five minute time limit per batter, except when you hit a home run in the last minute because then you get more time. Also, more time when you hit two home runs over 420 feet. Also, also more, more time when a home run goes more than 475 feet. And if there's a tie, more time. Flashkey. Buy or sell the new home run derby. Format. I think it's. I'm buying it. I think it's great. I think the old one got stale and old. This will be. Oh, so you got a lot of big guys swinging from their heels as fast as they can at every pitch they see. Okay. That'll be kind of fun. Plus, remember now they have bracketing, so it's like July Madden. We can have an ESPN pool, and I can win the pool like I do in college. Madden. Calisha. Whoa. Whoa. I'm buying it that they're at least trying to shorten it. You know, it doesn't need to last over two hours. They're, they're overcomplicating it with 90-second swing-offs and the rules about 475 feet homers, but they're at least moving in the right direction. Well, Monty Jones. I got to sell it, Bill. That's swinging as hard as you can, as fast as you can. It's all fun and games until the oblique gets pulled. The fact of the matter is well, it's just too long. It's just too many competitors. It just goes on. Three rounds of home run derby, I don't need all that. Give me 30 minutes like the old days back at the Wrigley Field in L.A. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Go. The old days. You go back to the 1960s? Okay, Bob Wright, how about you? <laughs> so I'm, I'm buying it. The length is important, and the length is much too long. And the length between number one and then his second round was always ridiculous. It's not a bad idea at all. Yeah. Bo, I used to watch that home run derby too, right? It was in reruns in the 80s or so. It always was fun. There was an empty ballpark, and there was one cameraman right. in the batter's box <laughs> on the other side yeah. shooting. And they get like $100 for doing I something special. Those players would smoke. Move on. Buy or sell too. Smoke too. What appeared to be an ejection over a bat that wasn't picked up. Mike Napoli. Who are you buying? Who are you selling here? The ump? Flair did both just overdo it here, Timmy. Completely selling the umpire here. That's a borderline pitch. All he does is drop his back because he thinks it's a walk. He doesn't argue with it. He's walking away. The ump wants him to go pick up the bat. Is that a necessary part of the game? Oh my no. God. I'm selling everything about this. I think the ump went too far in making him pick up his own bat, but the ridiculousness of the post-ejection argument in baseball, like anything, is going to change. Somebody jumped in a referee's face like that. The NBA, they call it a national guard. Everybody needs to calm down. <laughs> Bob Ryan. Mike Napoli is a very frazzled man now. He's having a great deal of trouble with the strike zone. So it's just not an excuse for this behavior. The umpire, however, is a rookie trying to over show he's a big deal. I'm selling him big time. When you say uh, Napoli's frazzled right now, it's because he's hitting just over 200? No, because he's uh, complaining that the strike zone has changed on him. He can't take pitches the way he once did and be assured to get the right call. And he's really going crazy about this. That's some inside information right there. Plash, how about you? Watch the replay, guys. He's clearly upset at the call. He clearly drops the bat as a show-up of a, of a call. That's his argument for balls and strikes. You can't argue balls and strikes. You can't show up with umpire on balls and strikes. It's a basic rule in baseball. Napoli lost his head. The umpire wasn't about the bat. It was about showing the umpire up with the bat. The Napoli's umpire did point the right thing. Was, though, Napoli should have I mean, been gone. We do employ people. We call them bat boys to pick up the bat. No, it's not about it's the bat. Right. It, was, it was about the action of throwing the bat down. Okay. Buy or sell three. Be more like Drew Brees. By yourself, Bengals defensive coordinator Paul Gunther's advice to Johnny Manziel, Bomani. Well, I mean, you got to buy it. Drew Brees has become the patron saint of the little man quarterback in the NFL. Anybody that's hovering right around six feet, try to be like Drew Brees because I can't think of too many other ones that have been that good. But never forget this. Drew Brees was not good for his first three years in the NFL. It turned around after that. So maybe that's an inspiration for Manziel. Right. Yeah, it's just a size comparison and maybe a little bit of a style comparison. He's just trying to give people a frame of reference. Here's a little guy named Drew Brees who made, uh, who made good, so this guy could too. Bill Plasky. 
Remember last year, Manziel's own offensive coordinator, Shanahan, called the year a disaster. So here's somebody actually saying something positive, promising about Johnny Manziel. It's the first time I've heard any football players say, well, football guys, well, maybe he can, he can be good. So you know what? Tim I think Kelly. Manziel ought to take this and run with it's it. It's nice to hear somebody hasn't completely given up on him, even if it's on a division rival. Uh, but he, he doesn't need to be like Breeze. He needs to be like Russell Wilson. That needs to be his role model. That's much more realistic for, for Johnny Manziel, not Drew Breeze. It's not going to throw for 5,000 yards. All right, that's the horn, Bill Plaschke. You know, you're at 298 wins, but right now. I know, I'm dying to get the 300. You're you got to give me a like shot like here, your, Tony. Your boy Diddy at you got to give me a shot to get the 300. I'm so close, so close. Huh? Not today, Kalisha Jones and Ryan, 25 points. All-time point record on the show, 71, set by Woody Page two years ago. Wow. See if Bob has it in the lightning round next. And coming up, this, then this, and Ooh. then this. The very bungled last 10 seconds of Bradley Vargas next. Welcome back to Around the Horn, presented by Smirnoff, part of Happy Hour. Don Mattingly says it's up to Yastiel Puig whether he wants to make adjustments and have a game plan and watch and study video, dot, dot, dot. Timmy, how do you think Puig responds? I think he responds by doing what he can, has always done. I'm sure Mattingly's a little frustrated, but I mean, the guy basically always hits 300. He doesn't have as much power as we think. He hasn't had a 20 home run season yet. Uh, maybe he'll grow into that, but, it, but for now it's not happening. Well, Monty Jones. It really just depends on what type of hitter Puig wants to be. He's hitting 300. His on-base percentage is at about 390. That's not the sort of thing that screams out alarm, alarm, alarm. But his OPS is below 900, which seems strange for such a hulking man. You'd expect more power out of him. If he wants more power, he's going to have to do other things. Bob Ryan. He is an, un an unpolished gem, there's no question. You know what he reminds me of a little bit? Manny Ramirez. He needs to talk with him. Manny would explain to him that it is not a bad thing to watch video. Okay. Did anybody question Mattingly doing this while he was batting 300? Tim, Bomani, you brought that no, up. No, I mean, he, he must have a reason to, feeling he needs to do it. So Lightning I'm, two, the finish to Bradley Vargas. This, this was just bizarre. Vargas pummeling Bradley in the last 10 seconds of the bout. Ref mistaking the 10 second clack clack for the bell. Vargas thought he won, got on the ropes. They went to the cards, and Bradley won. That makes you say what, Bomani? Boxing, ladies and gentlemen, boxing. Think about this for a second. It's actually a positive sign for boxing that people assume that this was based upon the incompetence of the referee rather than, you know, somebody trying to fix a fight. But it was an inexcusable thing to happen, and I just assume we'll have a rematch. Right. Just when you thought you'd seen it all department, of course. But here's what I'm thinking. Ten seconds. Everybody's harping on this, what would have happened. Ten seconds, he can stay up. I, I don't think there's any way you can assume he couldn't have lasted in the other ten seconds. Kalashaw. I don't think he was going to get knocked out, but the reason they have that clack clack sound at the 10 second mark is because it doesn't sound like a bell. Why do we have a referee in there who thinks clack clack is a bell? That's a problem. Maybe she should just have a horn. And that's ours it's right there. Bomani Jones, next to go. What's the last word? This is you telling me that I need to engage in some video study in order to improve my performance, <laughs> even though my base percentage you know, is about 390. Possibly. I could have given you the Rihanna treatment, too. I got the duct tape right here. Saying? You could have had the duct. I wouldn't hurt anything. Kalashaw, Ryan. Showdown next. Straight ahead. How I'm Kevin Durant's Papa Shot game compares to the all-time Big Papa. Put. Presented by Smirnoff. Please drink responsibly. Part of Happy Hour and in part by McDonald's. Oh, Bob Ryan, scores wiped clean in Showdown. Your versus Kalisha here. Oh, no, this is the setup here. Reality Salt Lake free kick. Are you giving full credit for perfection or are you saying there was some luck involved, Timmy? I'm saying the Columbus crew didn't do a great job of defending that play. They need to look at that, but th oh. that's a tremendous tic-tac-toe of a goal. The first guy who kicks it over to the side, he makes the best play of all of all the plays in that. Absolutely. That is the single greatest collaborative play I have ever seen in soccer because generally a collaborative play in soccer is one centering pass and one finish. This was unprecedented in I told my you it was a setup. soccer watching experience. The play is experience. perfection. Bravo, Reality Salt Lake. We'll move on. Is Kevin Durant's popper shot game? You're going to grade it right here. 
So it's important to note the competition. Uh, a young individual who's barely on the screen there. And also the final score, which is 42-26. And also, Bob, if you're grading on a curve, you're going to have to determine if it was better than the Papa Shop mash that we showed to go in a commercial break. Go. No, it was nowhere near as good. It's very good. Nice rhythm. Better than, you probably have beaten any of us, but the other guys off the charts. They're, those are the pros. Uh, there are people out there much better. Kevin Durant is always going to make a lot more money in basketball than the Papa Shop master, but he's not even close uh, to delivering what the guy was doing left and right handed, every ball going in. And then, of course, the best part, claiming his prize as he goes over <laughs> and fixes his there to get his prize. The hair handed. part that was the and the paper bag. You bring your lunch pail to worry. Bring the paper bag out and walks out with it. Ugh. Should you win, Bob Ryan, what would your 30 seconds be? I will tell you about the folly of the draft, the NBA draft. And Tim Kalashaw? Brian France coming around. Ooh, I think I want to hear that. Tim Kalashaw, 30 seconds face. Mm. You can easily say it's better late than never, uh, but Brian France, NASCAR's chairman, did come around over the weekend saying it is time for the Confederate flag to, lo to no longer be part of the NASCAR landscape. Uh, Dale Jr. and others have said this uh, many times before. You see it on flat. You see the flag on on trailers. You see it in, in the infield. And their France said they will look at everything they can to dis distance themselves from what has obviously become a symbol of hate that doesn't need to be part of any sporting event at this juncture. About time. Tim Kalashaw stays victor. Sorry, Left Bob. Jones, Ryan. See okay. 23 and a half hour break. We'll get back tomorrow <laughs> around the horn. Congrats on Red Smith, Bob. Woo!